Hey everybody, check it out. This is a new redesigned Volkswagen Atlas. And in this video, we are going to put it through the TFL slip test to torture test its all wheel drive system. We're gonna stick it on a lift, get it up in the air and see how it's engineered. We're gonna go through its interior back seat and third row. And then of course, get it off road to see if this vehicle is adventure ready. Let's go hit it. In the TFL slip test, we get various wheels stuck on purpose in these rollers to see how the all wheel drive system and traction control systems work to get us unstuck. Up first is the front wheel slip test. So both front wheels are stuck and the rear wheels are gonna have to engage to get us unstuck. We're nice and settled into drive. On the accelerator, just a little bit of slip from the front end, but really no delay. We pulled right off. Good result in the Atlas so far. Next up, we have the diagonal slip test. So the left front and the right rear are stuck in the rollers. And the other two opposite ends of the car are gonna to have to engage to get us unstuck. Very common off-road, also very common in snow. Imagine you're driving up on like a slushy curb. This is what you'd encounter. So normal mode, no special traction off settings, into drive, just like you drive it every day. Off the brake, out of the throttle, a little bit of slip, but without much drama, the car pulled us right down. Time to step it up a notch. Our first extreme test, three wheels are stuck. Only the right front is on the ground. Let's see if the Volkswagen can figure out how to get unstuck. Into drive, off the brake, wheels are spinning, onto the throttle, vehicle shifted. <laughs> well, we actually got a fair amount of torque transfer, and I know that because the torque of the vehicle actually caused it to start shifting around, but ultimately we were able to get off. I did my best to keep it settled in the rollers, but yeah, pretty good so far. Now, the way I always know we're getting a lot of torque transfer is if the wheel on the ground actually spins and does a burnout and leaves tire marks on the pavement, and we are definitely getting that in the Atlas. So pretty impressed with that. Now we do have a number of different modes in this car. So far we've been running it in the standard comfort mode, but if we get stuck on this final test, we can stick it in the off-road mode and see if that helps with things. So we're in drive right now. Only the right rear is on the ground. Traction control is trying to figure it out. Not a lot of torque transfer, keeping the wheel pointed a little to the right to stay centered in the rollers. Let's try the off-road mode. Let's see if that has an impact on traction control performance. Come on, right rear. Hey! <laughs> so it took quite a bit of throttle. Ultimately, the torque did cause us to slip off the rollers a little bit, but we did definitely get some more torque transfer to the right rear. It's not as aggressive as something like the Pilot Trail Sport with that IBTM4 system, but it did do a pretty good job. This is the Volkswagen Atlas SCL Premium R line, and this interior is quite luxurious, which you would expect for the asking price on this vehicle of $54,500. Now, the, the seats are one of the highlights of this interior, a black and white design with the white piping, which looks very, very nice, and the diamond quilting on the centers. Overall, a great seat, heated and ventilated. Now, there are some changes for the new Atlas, starting out with the technology, so you might note the new 12 inch screen that's running the latest and greatest in Volkswagen infotainment. It's still not my favorite system in the world. I am getting a little bit more used to it. They've eliminated just about all buttons from the system. So if you want to change the climate control, you use these little touch panels. And then if you want to open the climate menu, you have to go into, you gotta wait for it to kind of load there. You gotta touch there now you can adjust detailed climate options your heated and your ventilated seats for both sides it's a little fussy and then we also have different drive modes at the mode selector once again this isn't an actual button once again a touch sensitive panel you've got eco comfort sport custom off-road and snow now we do have a wireless charger in this vehicle that can be hidden away by this piano black finish and then we've got two usb-c ports down there a couple of cup holders start stop button here you got this little 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 doodad to select gears forward for reverse backward for drive and sport button for park good size little cubby here and then a really large center console one thing which i do like is we have physical buttons on the steering wheel no touch sensitive control so you're not accidentally hitting the heated steering wheel button like i do in other volkswagens and then we have a fully digital instrument cluster fairly standard interior design a couple things i like i do like the wood trim on this particular model i am a sucker for a nice wood and i also am kind of amused by the dual vents on either side of the dashboard 
And my favorite feature is up here, which is the full, we'll open that up, glass roof. That does open a nice way. So not only do you let a lot of light in, but you can also get some air in here as well. One of the highlights for me on the inside of the Atlas is definitely the rear seats. One of the best rear seats in the industry, almost minivan-like, and that is a big compliment. So tons of leg room, nearly a completely flat floor, which is awesome, and then headroom being a box is really, really great, even at six feet tall. I've got tons of it. This particular Atlas does have the captain's chairs, although a, uh, a bench is available. You can slide to and fro. You also have recline. And my favorite bit are these adjustable armrests, which work really well. Now there is room to pass through to the third row via this little channel, or seats fold forward really easily. Hop back here, let's see how the third row is. I'm gonna slide up the headrest fold this seat into its retracted position. Now this isn't fully back on the seat, but enough leg room for that person, enough leg room for me. And even with the seat all the way back, leg room is still just barely adequate. But the best part is, even at six feet tall, I have just enough headroom. We also have vents back here for third row occupants. So this is a very usable six seater vehicle, even for adults back here. When we lift open the power lift gate in the Atlas, we're gonna find enough space behind the third row for luggage, for groceries. It's actually pretty decent, 21 cubic feet, and then fold these down, and that's gonna increase space to about 56 cubic feet, which is quite nice. Those do fold flat. Just gotta give them a little push because those seats are all the way back. Underneath the floor, you're gonna find your subwoofer in this model, and then let's talk about towing capacity. This Atlas is rated to tow 5,000 pounds, which is definitely in line with other vehicles in this class, and you even get your seven pin connector there, but no brake controller. All right, so I'm in a really interesting predicament here. So I've come down into our test course here at Tumbleweed Ranch, and I can't get into the Onyx off-road pit because um, we've had these really heavy rains and it's turned the ground into the mushiest clay the world has ever seen. So I'm gonna just try to drive around our, uh, our test area here without going through the trenches and let's see if we can even get around this empty field without getting stuck. So, see how acceleration is. Four motion, all wheel drive. Okay, so pretty good so far. We are on this slightly grassy area, absolutely just kicking up mud. I know it's not gonna look like much on camera, but just even trying to get around this field, because the issue is, is clay cakes up these Bridgestone Olenza tires and then just turns it into absolute goop. You can hear the mud hitting the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it into the off-road setting. And we're gonna try to do a loop here. Good power out of this two liter, by the way. Really solid torque delivery. Very impressed with um, how this engine performs. Yeah, this <laughs> I've never seen conditions quite this bad out here. But actually, the oil dry system works surprisingly well, and actually, it does offer a lot of rear end torque availability. Look at that full lock, still going straight. This is just hopeless out here. If we didn't have this four motion system, we wouldn't be going anywhere out here. So I'm actually pretty impressed and the ride is really, really good. Here, we'll try one more acceleration through this absolute goop. Let's see if we can get, yeah, it does pretty good. <laughs> Overall, not bad from the Volkswagen. I'd really like to go take it into our trenches course, but we're never gonna get back out with these tires. So we'll have to wait for a drier day to give that a proper go, but overall, not bad. With the Volkswagen up on the lift, we can take a look at how this vehicle is engineered. So up front, we have a transversely mounted four-cylinder turbocharged engine that makes 269 horsepower, 273 pound-feet of torque. The old six-cylinder engine with 276 horsepower is no more. All Atlases are turbocharged only. It comes standard with front-wheel drive, but all-wheel drive is available. Of course, we've got a strut-based front suspension here, and then we've got 21-inch wheels on this R-Design trim with 13.2-inch 
front brake discs. Now moving further back, we see our exhaust system rounded down the center of the car here with muffler. Over on this side, we're gonna find our fuel tank. No protection on this fuel tank and it is a composite unit. And then out back, we find our rear differential with this truly beefy sway bar. We've got a multi-link rear suspension riding on coil springs. And then of course, our exhaust system out back with dumps out the bottom. So it does have the faux exhaust tips out rear. Overall, the Volkswagen Atlas is a very usable family hauling three row SUV with a nice interior, albeit a fairly hefty price tag in the mid $50,000 range. I like the engine, I like the transmission, I like the overall comfort. Fuel Economy 21 is pretty good for a three row. And look, it's not a rock crawling SUV, but it does have a pretty decent all wheel drive system. And with some better tires, maybe even that peak edition, this vehicle will take you places that you'd wanna go for your family adventures. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. A big thank you to Case behind the camera. We'll see you in the next video.